His name is Rick Santorum. Uh, do I call you Senator Santorum? Do I call you Richard? Rick Santorum, welcome to this program. Thank you, Eric. It is great to be at your side. You are someone that I've known long enough that I do get confused sometimes. I'm trying to think in what capacity wow. uh, did you last have an official position and, and by what title do I need to address you? Yeah, no, Senator, it was the last time I, I, uh, I was elected to anything. I, I ran a couple times for president, you might remember. And uh, That's not ringing any bells. Yeah, yeah, it, that's, that's no, sort of what no, happened. Listen, I, I well remember uh, a lot about you, and it's a joy to sit next to you. I'm glad you are at the NRB. There's a number of things I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about current events, but you are involved in what's called the Convention of States. Yes. There are a lot of people listening to this program that don't understand anything about that. If you don't mind... Explain what that is. I'd love to because uh, about eight months ago, I didn't know very much about it. I mean, I'd heard of convention of states. I knew that it was an issue. Uh, but all I knew about convention of states was that it was a dramatic uh, sort of break glass and pull in case of emergency provision that was included in the Constitution. And, uh, and that at least when I first heard about it, I didn't think we were there yet. Uh, and and candidly, you know, I've, I saw some things happen in the past few years that have really concerned me uh, that we're seeing uh, even more than normal. I mean, I was always because, you know, I've written books. I've, I've been out of the campaign trail talking about the decline in, in, in the culture and what's happening in Washington, the increasing authoritarianism in Washington. But we've reached a whole new level. I mean, 30 trillion dollars in, in debt and. Uh, candidly, both parties seeming unwilling to be concerned about federal authority or federal spending or anything when it comes to the power that's located in Washington, D.C. And I see presidents, you know, I loved what Donald Trump did. Didn't always like the way he did it. I mean, I think, you know, using executive power uh, and, and sort of rolling over, um, you know, uh, is, is is something I expected more out of Democrats. I, I, I hesitate a little bit when I saw the President Trump. I understand why he did it, the frustration that, that he had. But, you know, I guess the, 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 the straw that broke the Campbell's back is when actually it was Donald Trump calling for the end of the filibuster four years ago. Well, and, and, well before we get to that, so, so there are issues. OK. The Convention of States, again, for, for people that aren't familiar with it, because some people are, but many are not, this is something that, uh, where do we get this idea? Yeah, yeah. okay. And where, I, does I, it, I, where does it, where does it, yeah, I, Let me just get to that. So I was at a point in my life where I'm thinking, okay, uh, we need to do something about Washington because I am convinced Washington can fix itself. And so a friend of mine, a guy named Mark Meckler, uh, uh, when I, I had just been fired from CNN, uh, or canceled, I guess is really the best Did way. you do something horrible? Yeah, like I speak, did. Speak the truth? I did. I told Shame the truth. Shame on you. I did. I told CNN, the truth. CNN, what are you even thinking? Yeah, I'm Come sorry. Uh, Gee and, whiz. And so uh, and I was saying, you know, I'm looking, you know, what's what's my next thing? What am I going to do? I want to stay involved in the fight. And uh, I talked to Mark, and he said, hey, you know, I've seen you've been giving these speeches about your concern about authoritarianism and, and what's going on in Washington. And on both sides, he said, there's an answer that the founders created. It's in Article 5 of the Constitution. It's called a Convention of States. And I said, yeah, I sort of know about it, don't know too much about it. And so he provided me a bunch of information and sort of, um, let's just say I, I read myself into the church, right? So where does it come from in the Constitution? It's Article 5. There's, you know, okay. uh, the, the fifth article of the Constitution. And most people have never heard about this. In other words, it's kind of there. It's, it's there. almost like a poison pill or it's like one of those things, if things go really bad, break glass. Exactly. It is. Like, like if things get really bad, break the glass and there's a hammer or there's a button or there's a something the Convention of States in Article 5 in the Constitution, it's there. If things get really bad, the states okay, do, I would can stop. have yeah, a convention. Exactly. We've never had one in no, 250 years. Not. Or whatever. And, and I would just say to any of your listeners, do you think we're not there? Uh, <laughs> my listeners can't answer, but on, on their behalf, let me say, I think we're there. Yeah. And so that's the conclusion that I made. And so I looked at this and said, okay, what are the upsides and the downsides of this? Because, you know, this is a, this is a you know, an, an sort of an emergency uh, provision. Now, I don't know if the founders looked at it that way, but I think most people who look at it today do. And, and here's what it is. There are two ways to amend the Constitution. One is Congress can propose amendments. And the second, never been used, as you mentioned, is the state legislatures can pass a resolution Two-thirds of the state legislatures, 34 state legislatures, can pass a resolution calling for a convention 
to propose amendments to the Constitution. Right. So, in a sense, take the place of Congress, who can now propose amendments to the Constitution, but but create a convention where each state will come, whether you voted for it or not, all 50 states are invited to come. Every state, because it's a sovereign entity unto itself, gets one vote. They can they will each appoint delegations. It can be whatever. So this is like the Constitutional Convention of 1787. Except it is limited to what the resolution says it's limited to. Because the resolution is a, is, is, uh, a prescribes the, uh, uh, the germane amendments that are permitted during this convention. Okay, right. it is not a constitutional convention to write a constitution. It is a convention of the states to propose amendments to the constitution, okay. and so you can you can limit the subject matter, which this resolution does, to three things. So these are the three things. I mean, there are plenty of resolutions yeah. that have asked for a convention in the past. None of them ever succeeded, but this one says three things. Number one. Amendments can be proposed to limit the terms of congressmen, senators, and other federal officials. Number two, it can limit the spending. Like you, you only get to steal one term as president? <laughs> That's, yes. That would be fair. There. Uh, number two, to limit the spending power of the federal government. So balanced budget, tax limitation, yeah, spending limitation. Right. Number three, to limit the power and jurisdiction of the federal government. So we can have amendments that say, you know, con- you know, Congress, Mr. President, you cannot legislate, let's say, in the area of primary and secondary education. Just just an example. Throw that out there. Right. OK. So well, why, why would you need a rule when I would think that would already be in place without being in place, that that what role would uh, the, the president have? He doesn't have that authority already. But they do. I mean, they they I mean, you, you see uh, we have a Department of Education. That, that dictates all sorts of that policy. That shouldn't exist. I agree. but Thank you, Richard Nixon. But here's what happened. No, no, no. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. Uh, what, what happened is over time, and, that's, and I think this is why they put this provision in there, they knew that over time, you know, uh, things would change. And, and I don't think they anticipated this, but what happened is the courts. The courts have systematically amended the Constitution to create an, an ever-increasing powerful federal state. And so what we need to do is get the state legislatures right. to pass constitutional, proposed constitutional amendments to call back that power to the states. Okay, so uh, just so I'm clear, uh, right now, and I'm going to play devil's advocate because yeah, I want to I see if it. I understand this correctly. Right now, somebody would say, well, wait a minute, the states already have a voice. They elect uh, members to Congress. They each get two senators. How is this different from that? Is this Is this that the state legislatures uh, are able to exercise powers that they are not currently able to exercise, that they would need a convention of states for the state legislatures to do that? The state legislatures would call the convention, the state legislatures would appoint the delegates, and those delegates, which I assume would be mostly state legislatures, legislators, would then propose amendments. And then it would go to the state legislatures for Ratification, Right. So it bypasses the, the, the whole point, and this is what George Mason talked about, Eldridge Gary, Governor Morris, all of which were involved in this at the time of the convention. They wanted a way to bypass Congress and the president and governors by that. They didn't trust governors either. And let the people who were closest to the people be able to maintain okay. the sovereignty of states. So this is, it's a fascinating concept. I mean, for anybody who understands anything about how our government works, the idea that these founders, uh, nearly 250 years ago, uh, Governor Morris, uh, Mason, and others, that they saw that we might need to be able to do this. Yeah, George Mason was the big proponent of this. Okay. He was the one who was very much afraid of federal power. He ended up voting against the Constitution, if you may recall. But he he was very strident on this point and governor morris and albridge gary both came forward with this amendment to uh, to satisfy him he still didn't vote for it but uh that was the the purpose behind it well and it, by the way there was no debate on the amendment none they just they, it approved without comment in in 1787 yeah. yeah okay so right now obviously because of uh, mark meckler you mentioned uh, and others there is the idea of having a convention of the states. Eighteen states have adopted this resolution that uh, I just talked about. And how many about. do we need? Uh, 34. 
And so uh, three have just so done so simply, this year. Simply by talking it on this program, we're increasing the odds. Absolutely. When we come back, we will continue my conversation with Senator Rick Santorum of the great state of Pennsylvania. We'll be right back. In case you haven't been paying attention, the Biden administration has caused a financial crisis and they have no clue how to fix it. Oil prices have skyrocketed. And when oil prices go up, the cost of transportation and shipping spikes, leading the prices of goods to rise. And when we're already seeing record inflation, that's the last thing we need. Our economy is in trouble and you need to take steps to protect yourself. If all your money is tied up in stocks, bonds and traditional markets, you are vulnerable. Gold is one of the best ways to protect your retirement. No matter what happens, you own your gold. It is real. It is physical. It's always been valuable since the dawn of time. Legacy Precious Metals is the company I trust for investing in gold. They can help you roll your retirement account into a gold-backed IRA where you still own the physical gold. They can also ship gold and precious metals safely and securely to your house. Call Legacy at 866-528-1903 or visit them online at LegacyPMInvestments.com. Folks, welcome back. I'm talking to Senator Rick Santorum. It's such a joy, Rick, to, to sit here with you and talk about great these to be things. With you. And we've you always were, had great conversations. Well, listen, you, you are you're one of the heroes in, in, in my world. I'm just so happy that you're out there and I'm really happy that you've gotten involved with the uh, Convention of States movement. So you said that right now 18 states already have said they want to do That's this. Correct. And we have another state, uh, South Carolina, which we believe is on the precipice of, uh, of voting for this. And, and what do you need? You need the state legislatures yeah, to governors, say we want to do this. Yeah, it, because the resolution is a resolution. It's not a bill. So the governors don't have to sign it. And so uh-huh. uh, if we can get 34 state legislatures okay. and people say, wow, well, you're only at 18 or maybe 19, you're still a long way away. Yes, but 31 legislatures right now are controlled by Republicans. Every legislature that has passed this, Texas, Florida, Indiana, Wisconsin, etc., are all Republican legislatures. Overwhelmingly, Republicans uh, are for this, and overwhelmingly, Democrats are against this. And why would that be? Yeah. Is it because Democrats are in state with big state Marxist government? Could it be that? Could it be that? It sounds strangely and, or do, like or it might be that. Or do they like that. centralized government control? Yes, they like to crush the weak. Yeah. It's a Darwinian principle. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is interesting. How do you... Um, get the word out? I mean, is it by doing programs like this that people in we, these uh, states... Uh, I do lots start- of uh, lots of radio and, and TV programs. Uh, and, and this year alone, I've been to 10 state capitals. And I talk to legislators and, uh, you know, work with them. Just like you, Eric, I mean, this is not an issue that is top of mind to pretty much... It's a new concept. It's never been done before. Yeah. It's not... National media, thankfully, has, has not started to cover this. Because when they do... It's they're going to be against it's it. Gonna, they're going to be against oh, it, and they're going to do everything. It's going to be the uh, the convention of white supremacist exactly. states exactly. any second now. Exactly. Right. So, so the so the idea is, uh, and I tell all the legislators, look, you want to vote for this now, not you don't want to be state thirty one, thirty two, or thirty three, because you're going to have every left wing group and George Soros and everybody else out there trying to destroy you uh, for doing this. So, uh, the, you know. I like talking about it in your radio program and talking about it to the base. Yeah. But uh, not real interested in going on national TV to talk too much about it. Well, it's funny because I, I get that point. But I do think that, um, you know, because of the hellish circumstances in which we find ourselves, I think many, many Americans are waking up who were previously asleep. Uh, and, and so I think that uh, it's this is exciting. This is exciting to me because it's kind of like... You, you know, to, to actually get to see the constitutional, to, to get to see the constitutional, the constitution working in our time. In other words, to see it, it come I, to life, I, you know, it's historic. I tell people this all the time. But the, I get two arguments from people who are against this. Number one is nothing's going to happen. I mean, to get 34 states, you'll never get 34 states. Or if you do get 34 states and they, and they propose amendments, 
there's no way 38 states are going to approve, uh, you know, approve an amendment coming out of the convention. And then the other argument is it's going to be a runaway convention and they're going to repeal every First Amendment and all these things, so, which, of course, are 100, 180 degrees from each other. Right. Uh, and which is ridiculous, because I think the more likely scenario is it's going to be hard to get anything done because it's a very divided country. Right. But here's But you make as I'm not surprised you cut to the chase which is the most important thing we can do here, even if we don't get a single amendment adopted. Right. We have now focused the American public for a period of time on our Constitution, our division of power, who should be responsible at a time when Americans are actually worried about that. They're worried about this authoritarian bent coming out. They see what Justin Trudeau is doing. They see what, what Washington is doing with mandates and things like that. And it is the perfect time to have a national debate. And imagine, imagine this war- we get a convention call. Everybody's going to be talking about it. There's going to be national TV well, coverage. Well, I was going to say, like, the, the um, Americans uh, are, you know, bright, interested, and th- they follow sports. I mean, they're people that know more about the, uh, <laughs> the details yeah. of, you know, sports contests and so on and so forth. When we focus our attention on something like this that is actually historic, that really, really matters— it, it, Remember, it, kids it, are going to be beautiful. taught the Constitution in schools. I mean, they aren't now, but is they'll that, have to be. Is that constitutional? <laughs> uh, right. It, it, it's so funny because there was a time in America when kids in, in public schools and all schools were taught the Constitution, and they understood that, in a sense, you cannot really be an American unless you understand these things. Yeah. That, of course, has evaporated in our lifetime. So this is it's a great opportunity. It's a wonderful I, opportunity. I am mo- I'm most excited about the opportunity of having the convention. And, and at the minimum, you fire a shot across the bow of the Congress and the president and said, you know what? OK, we didn't get anything done this time, but we did it. We can do it again. And you're now you're going to have to be on guard. You're going to have to, you know, you're you either start getting your act together or we're going to get your act together for it. Well, look, this is classic checks and balances, yep. right? Exactly. The, the idea that that some of these founders understood that, hey, here's another thing. Here's another arrow in our quiver of checks and balances. Let's put this in there and hopefully we never need to use it. But suddenly, you know, the now centuries we, pass and I think we could use it. I would make the argument that. If the founders came back to America and you could update them <laughs> and, and they would look and they would the one thing they would say is looking at the Constitution is, why haven't you we gave you this to use so, so this wouldn't happen? Why haven't you used it yet? Yeah. I think that would be one of their biggest questions. Well, a lot of these things are an issue of God's t- time. You and I understand it's an issue of God's yep. timing. There's no natural answer. But I, I just think that things have to get to a certain place. Thirty trillion dollars. Where, where people re- listen. That is so sick. It is mind-blowing. Yep. And most Americans, uh, I would say, get that. Certainly those who listen to this program get that. We're going to go to a break. We're talking to Rick Santorum. Yes, Rick Santorum. It's the Eric Metaxas Show. I'm here live in Philadelphia at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. When you hear the phrase, lives, fortunes, and sacred honor, these are the folks we should think of. Those who anonymously gave their lives. Well, today you have a chance to volunteer. You need to volunteer for conventionofstates.com, the movement that's going to save the country. These folks were willing to step up and give everything. We need you to give just a little bit. Go to conventionofstates.com and volunteer today. 